We're going to do the standard Proctor test, which is for maximum bulk density. So Simon, can you just briefly tell us what that test is and why we would do it? So Proctor method is uh, to test uh, the uh, potential of the cell to be compacted. So how much can it be compacted? And now here we use it to get a reference uh, bulk density because we need that to get our relative bulk density as we need this relative bulk density to show the uh, compaction level of our soil and also related to tree growth. Okay, so um, what we already did before we start here in the lab was we've already been out to the field and collected 25 liters of soil from a site which is a lot of soil um, for this particular test that you need. And then back in the lab, you want to prepare that soil by air drying it a little bit, and you want to sieve it. So we've already done that stage, and then weighed out three kilograms of the soil to start getting ready for the actual test. Because the Proctor test is actually is a test about the relationship between the bulk density and the water content, when you apply a certain amount of compactive force. So we need five points, and we now we just show one example to reach to the middle point. Mm -hmm. And then you make this sample uh, drier or wetter each time 2%. Uh, so you make a two uh, subsamples drier than this uh, middle point and a two subsamples wetter than this sample. So you're going to start wetting the soil to try yeah. and find a midpoint yes. of the moisture content to yeah. make this curve. So to reach to that uh, middle point, and you just add water to your sample, and then to see if you can form a ribbon. And if you reach that point, that is just the point for your mid uh, point uh, water content for your sample. Okay. So it sounds like it just takes a little bit of experience to know when you get to that point and the soil is going to be able to form a ribbon. Now it's still dry, so I keep on adding water. We've been mixing for a little while and adding water and want to just test and see if the soil will form a ribbon yet, if it's getting close. Okay, now let's see. Okay, it's almost there, but still need a little bit of water. Okay. So, let's see. It can, it can hold, hold itself, but uh, not, not strong enough, so. So it's not quite sticking together enough, so you'll yeah. keep adding some water. Yeah, but almost uh, there. Okay. Yeah. Trudy, now you see it's almost, uh, all I can say it's ready, but uh, we need uh, to test if we can form a ribbon. Okay. Or, so I take some and uh, press it and uh, see. Now you can see, because uh, soil is still quite uh, sandy, mm -hmm. but it can, like, it can hold the form itself. So which means it's there for that midpoint. So we're happy with this midpoint of the soil and it makes a ribbon. Are we ready to start the test? Uh, not yet. So for a real test, you need to um, remove it in a plastic bank and then let it incubate overnight as into the test. But for this uh, demonstration, we can just uh, use it right uh, away. Okay, so normally we'd have to bag it up, but yeah. for today we'll just keep going. Yeah. So usually, and you need to uh, prepare five sub-samples for five different uh, water contents, right? Five times, that's going to take a long time. <laughs> yeah, you should be very dedicated. Okay, so we'll pretend that we have our five samples, they sat overnight, can we do the test now? Yes, and so now we just uh, put uh, the sam sample uh, into this mold. And this mold has two parts. So this part can be detached. And uh, this is a rammer we will use. And the weight of this rammer is 2.5 kilograms. And so during the test, you just let the rammer drop from the height of 302 millimeters and to apply the compactive force to your sample. So you add the sample into three layers. So we take this uh, top part off and uh, for the uh, adding of the first layer of your, our sample. Mm -hmm. And uh, we can do it now. 
So it sounds like everything's standardized with the height and the weight of the rammer and the size of the mold so yes. that the yeah. test will be the same at any laboratory and you can compare the values. Exactly. So do we need to squish it in there? I just let the rammer do the work. All right, that must be this. Yeah. So you might have wanted to just press a little bit to make uh, uh, so a contact uh, quite well, but you don't want to press it too hard. Okay. You just want the rammer to do the work, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, seems uh, we can go now. All right, so we're ready for the rammer? Yeah. <coughs> Ugh, it's kind of heavy. It's heavy. Mm -hmm. And it's heavy because this also is heavy, and the ram, ram RAM actually is here, so this uh, functions as a ruler. So uh, when you lift it at the top, it's exactly, if you let it sit here, it's exactly 302 millimeters. So now you let it drop freely. So, and you, by the way, you apply five, sorry, 25 strokes of the compactive force okay. by the uh, dropping of this so pull RAM. it up so, and yeah. drop it 25 times. Yeah. Three, four. And I see you're moving it around to get all the way around. Right. So now we have already applied 25 uh, strokes. Now we take the rammer away and we add the second layer of the sample. Okay. okay. And now you can touch it and see how tight it is. So you can see that it's compressed down quite a ways and yeah, it feels a lot firmer than before. Yeah. So that's the first layer. Yeah. Uh, we should uh, now we should uh, add this part. Okay. So that's a good question. So now we tighten it, and now we apply. And now it's ready. So we now we, we need to apply the second time of the compactive force. Okay. One. Two. Okay, 25 times. So, now you can see it again. So it went down about the same amount again. Now we apply the strokes again. So 20 times. The last one. So now we need just to uh, take the sample for the bulk density measurement. Okay. First we I'll tighten this, and uh, so we take uh, the, this top part away. Okay. Yeah, and, and uh, we just screw like this way. I see it's starting to leak a little bit. Is that normal? Yeah, that's Some normal. Water coming out? Yeah. So you take this first top part off, and now you can see the shape of the sample being mm -hmm. compacted. So Simon, we've done the three different layers and compacted each layer, and this is sort of the end result after we take the top module off. Yes. Um, what's the next step? So uh, because you would only focus on this part, this volume is known, right? Okay. So you need to trim this extra part off. So we don't care about this part that's sticking up. Yeah. All right. So I just trim it off. So we take this part away, and then we just uh, refine the top. 
smooth it off so now we know yeah. very exactly the volume of this bottom part. Yes, and okay. now we need to uh, clean this part and also now we just take this mold off the base. <coughs> And now we need to clean the outside. So it's packed in there so firm it didn't even fall out the bottom. <laughs> no. So okay. Uh, so now uh, the mold is clean, and we put it on the scale to get the fresh weight of this mold with the sample. So we weigh the mold and the soil together. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So we could dry the whole mold in the oven, Yes. but because we only have one and we don't want to wait that yeah. long, yeah. we'll just take a subsample? Right. Okay. And especially think about you have five points to make, right? It would be yeah. a so. month just to do one sample. Exactly. <laughs> so we take a, a part from the top and put it in the tin, and then we flip it over and take up some part from the bottom. So which also means that you need a very big, a huge tin. Otherwise okay. you need to like maybe you take uh, several subsamples, uh, several, I mean several tins. So, and I always uh, take the uh, soil from the from the center around. Okay. So. so some from the top, some from the bottom. Yeah. And just fill up the tin? Yeah. Okay. And after that, I scoop some parts away. I put it in the spacing, so. So. You're just scraping down until yeah. you're about halfway. Right, until I reach to the middle. And now, so I take the last uh, subsample and I put it together. Okay, so now I cover it with lead and then get the fresh weight of this okay. tin and then put it in the oven and dry for uh, 18 to 24 hours at 105 degrees Celsius. So we do everything we just did five yeah. times total. Yes. And have five bulk densities, and we're plotting those against the water content. Yes. And all that work will be, and we'll get two numbers, the maximum bulk density and a critical water content. Right. And that's the Proctor test. Yes. Okay.